This episode is brought to you by Novilla Mattresses. When it comes to your mother, you want her sleeping in a comfortable bed. When she's with me, she won't have to worry about that because I sleep on a Novilla mattress. Let me tell you, when your mom is at my place, she is sleeping on a very comfortable mattress and she is going to get you one as well. Meet their Bliss Organic Memory Foam Mattress. Perfect for those who want a cool, dry, undisturbed sleep throughout the night, made with organic bamboo charcoal fiber, excellent motion isolation, cooling gel infused memory foam that fits all bed frames and is reasonably priced. Perfect for if you want an inexpensive mattress for you, your children, or even for your guest room. It comes in a box delivered right to your door and you get 100 nights to try it out. Skip that trip to the big box mattress store and get a mattress from Novilla. Throw out that cheap Walmart mattress you got in college and get yourself a mattress made by Novilla. Using promo code SHWEEZY or the link in our description, you can save 10% on any purchase through Novilla directly. Try out the mattress that your mom tried out last night. Again, that's 10% off using promo code SHWEEZY. And a reminder, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Hello, and what is going on, my fellow Schwoke Lords? What is up? Welcome to yet another episode of Cancel Sweezy, better known as the Lords Trademark Favorite Podcast. What is up? Welcome to the show today, folks. Uh, well, thank you for clicking on my dumb fucking face and uh, seeing what God or the Lord Trademark has in store for you today in everything that you do on Cancel Sweezy. Because the brownie! Uh, welcome to the show today, folks. It's, it's going to be our best episode ever. I, I guarantee that this is probably the best episode of Cancel Sweezy we've probably ever made. And uh, why would I lie to you? I wouldn't lie to you. Uh, what was it? I was thinking, trying to think of a song, but now I forgot what song uh, I was going to like sing. And uh, nevertheless, he persisted. Uh, we have to move on. We have to continue. We have to continue the journey. We have to continue the struggle. The power. The power of, uh, the power of me. The power of being shwoke. Welcome to the show today, boys and girls. Friends and family around the world in this country. Uh, welcome to the show today. I feel, I feel, I'm feeling good today, you know, feeling good today. Uh, I play, I got to play music this weekend, uh, uh, the band I'm playing with the guitar player, uh, his girlfriend came, he, his new girlfriend, like, he, I don't know if he's had anyone before, but he started dating someone, and, uh, and, like, his mom and the girlfriend were just talking to each other, and it's, like, a pretty new relationship, too, uh, and so I, you know, I see that, and it gave me anxiety, because imagine, imagining someone who's seen my wiener and uh, is now talking to my mom. It's going to be pretty rough. That's rough, buddy. Uh, just imagining the conversation now. Yeah, you know, when he was in the fifth grade, uh, one month he didn't make the book it to get that free pizza from Pizza Hut. So ever since then, uh, I've thought he's had some mental problems. So and I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, you know. Anyways, though, so along with my problems, well, welcome to the show today, folks. Uh, Cancel Shweezy, the only podcast that has been wanting you to come for a long time. And uh, if you don't get that joke, hopefully you do get that joke. Uh, by some point in this episode, we'll be talking about that. So uh, don't be don't be stingy. Come on, Mark, don't be stingy. And uh, make sure you're hanging out uh, for for all that. Um, but in the meantime, let's go check out my music uh, under Shweezy. I think I do have a release coming up in November. Uh, I'm not allowed to announce it yet. But it's coming. It's coming up in May. Do, I don't think I have coming up in May. That's like the one I'm, I'm missing. Every week I'm thinking of one. All right. Last week I remembered to do that. Get this one. Because the brownie. Um, and then now this week we're coming up. Uh, we got it. I forgot coming up in May. And I, I, you know, I have like fucking. Man proposes and God disposes. And that's my hole. That, that's where it spits. I don't even need to use. That's my hole. That, that's where it spits. Like that's what we're talking about here. I don't even need to use that. But for some reason, I have it. Like I, I don't even know the times I can even can use it. Uh, I'm talking about the dumb. Maybe the, you know, sometimes I the 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 hole in my face. Uh, that's my hole. That, that's where it spits. Uh, that may be like the one time. Uh, you could probably check that out. Anyways, though, go check out my music under Shweezy. It's like the the podcast you're checking out right now. Cancel Shweezy. You just take out the uh, the cancel part, and it's just Shweezy. You'll find me there. Hopefully, mid November. Uh, some of y'all are gonna be able to know what I'm talking about. Uh, so don't be stingy. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. Uh, and then you can go check me on social media at the Shweezy. Uh, that's TikTok. That's uh, Facebook. That's Instagram. Twitter. 
all those. Um, and then twitch.tv slash the Shweezy. Another great place you can go follow me. That's where I stream video games every Thursday. Uh, I believe we're going to be continuing my uh, my black randomizer. I was doing or some of you are probably like, what happened to the heart gold Nuzlocke? I'm like, I lost, okay? Uh, I lost. I played myself. Congratulations. You played yourself. And uh, it, it's over. It's done. We're it's 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 no longer gonna happen, okay? Uh, I'm only a man. Uh, Am I a man or am I a Muppet? That's for another day. Uh, if you do have an Amazon Prime account, what you can go ahead and do, uh, connect that with your Twitch account, a.k.a. getting yourself a Twitch Prime, gives you the ability to subscribe to someone over on Twitch once a month. Uh, typically, if you're going to follow anyone on following anyone on Twitch, that is free. Uh, but to subscribe to them, typically spend about $5, but you're in luck with that Amazon Prime account connected to you. You can just uh, financially help support the, the Shweezy Empire without spending any extra money than you're already spending every month. And it takes $5 away from Jeff Bezos, and uh, that guy is pretty fucking stingy. Come on, Mark, don't be stingy. <laughs> what is it? I was, like, thinking Mark Zuckerberg, and I was like, come on, Jeff, come on, Jeff, don't be stingy. Come on, Jeff, show me that you like me. Come on, Jeff, I'm going to suck it dry. Uh, come on, Jeff. Uh, well, Jeff, you know, my grandma once said... Man proposes and God disposes. I'm like, okay, Grandma, you, you, you do that. Um, so... Yeah, definitely, that's a great way to help financially support us. Another way to financially help support us, so go check out our Patreon page, uh, where it's a tip jar, and it's just a great way to say thank you for being a friend. Uh, what would Betty White do? Betty White would have would have helped me. She, you know, if I, if I threw a party and invited everyone you knew, you'd see the biggest gift would be from me. And the card with Tatch would say, thank you for being a friend. But let's not forget all the free shit you can also go ahead and do. Uh, if you want to do some free shit, make sure you uh, you go, especially the audio listeners, go check out our YouTube page. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube page, even if that's not your main source of it. We're trying to build up our YouTube page. And the nice thing about the YouTube page is that we post the highlights from on the show, and you get to share those with your friends. And so that's another way to help. Uh, make, leaving a comment, giving us a like, commenting, sharing with your friends with the highlights. You know, it's it's just one one big long adventure. And I really like that. So yeah, go and check that out. And obviously, if you're on the audio only platforms, uh, give us a five, four, three, two, or one star rating and leave us a review. Those are great ways that you can help us out in our world. But what about my? What about I don't know. What's going What's going on? What's going on, boys and girls and the they them's non bonds of the world. Let's fucking get into it. You know what? Let's just jump into it. Uh, we're going into previous week right now. What is previous week right now, you may be asking? Well, what I what I always wanted to let you know at the previous week right now is it's all the important things that happened last week, but we're going to be going over them right now. Uh, to be honest with you, we were kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel this week for news. Some weeks I'm just like, I think like last week I had like seven or eight articles I could pull from and I just picked the best four. <clears throat> and uh, this week, yeah, it, it 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 was it was pretty rough. That's rough, buddy. Uh, so let's just uh, let's just jump right into it. Let's just jump into it, uh, and and just see what the hell what the fuck is going on in our world today, uh, friends around the world in this country. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, this is from the Hollywood Report. Uh, Caven's Caven. That's rough, buddy. Uh, Kevin Spacey denies Anthony Rapp's sex abuse claim, says father was a white supremacist and a neo-Nazi. Okay, Hollywood Report, what do you got to say on this? Kevin Spacey testifies in a New York courtroom Monday that he never made a sexual pass at actor Anthony Rapp, who was sued, claiming the Academy Award actor tried to make him to take him to bed when he was 14. Identifying himself as Kevin Spacey Fowler, the actor, was asked about Rapp's claims that a then 26-year-old Spacey picked him up like a groom does a bride after a 1986 party and put him on his bed before lying on top of him. Rapp testified earlier in the trial that he squirmed out from underneath Spacey in the full-clothed encounter from before fleeing the apartment, only to have Spacey follow him to the door and ask if he was sure he wanted to leave. 
They are not true, Spacey said of the allegations. Then he was asked if he has been private about his personal life over his career. I work in a very complicated family dynamic, he said, saying rants by his white supremacist and neo-Nazi father when he was a youngster led him to hate bigotry and intolerance. Uh, Spacey said his father's mind was likely damaged during unemployment resulting from an unsuccessful quest to be a creative writer. Uh, my father was a white supremacist and neo-Nazi, Spacey said. It meant that my siblings and I were forced to listen to hours and hours of my father lecturing about his beliefs. He said it was when my hatred of bigotry and intolerance began. Uh, Spacey called it humiliating and terrifying when friends came over to the house because he was never sure what his father might say to them or to him. Everything about what was happening in that house was something I had to keep to myself. We never ever talked about it. I have never talked about these things publicly ever, he said. As Spacey became interested in theater, he said he endured the screams of his father who used to yell at me at the idea that I might be gay. Spacey's testimony began two hours after Judge Louis A. Kaplan threw out a claim of intentional infliction of emotional distress after lawyers for rap finished their presentation of evidence, Kaplan said. Elements of the claim duplicate rap's claim that he was a victim of assault and battery. Spacey's lawyer argued for dismissal of the case on the grounds that rap's attorneys had failed to prove his claim. Kaplan said the trial can proceed with assault and battery claims asserted by Rapp, a 50-year-old regular on Star Trek Discovery on television. He was part of the original Broadway cast of Rent. Oh, okay. Spacey, 63, was an Oscar-winning actor popular on the Netflix series House of Cards and claims by Rapp and others in 2017 abruptly derailed his career. Uh, Rapp was performing in Precious Sons on Broadway in 1986 when he met Spacey. Rapp testified over several days earlier in the trial, which entered in the third week on Monday. Associated Press does not na usually name people alleging sexual assault unless they come forward publicly, as Rapp has done. Okay. Anthony Rapp, he was the original in Rent? Okay. Um, I need to see his face, because I don't know what he looks like. <laughs> uh, pulling up the Google. Uh, let's see. Anthony Rapp. Rapp. American actor. Oh, he was like the director guy. Yeah. Yeah, he was the director guy. I mean, here's something that was kind of funny. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying this is... You know what's really funny about this whole sexual assault thing? Fuck. Um, it's a little loud, but it is funny how Kevin Spacey was like, he kind of knew he was gay, that the kid was gay. Um, I'm not saying it was right. I'm just saying he knew, at least. I mean, like, his gaydar's on. Like, you know, sometimes, like, gay guys will hit on just the straightest person ever, and then they're like, oh, I'm sorry, or they wish, you know, they were straight, you know. Uh, most men think, wish I was gay, so, uh, and then most people think I'm gay, so, I mean, I'm not doing that much better, uh, if we're gonna be honest here, um, but anyways, though, yeah, um, so rap, okay, he was the guy who, he was the, he was the director guy in, in Rent, who made the movie about Angel, uh, that was him, that was him, uh, rest in peace, Jonathan, Jonathan Larson, um, anyways, though, yeah, uh, so, you know, <laughs> Here, here's the thing, you know, when this originally came out, the original report of it, um, the, the original report that I saw, it was like, Kevin Spacey was like, I think this is a good time to let everyone know that I am gay. I'm like, I think we're past that, Kevin. I'm pretty sure we're past that. And then, now, he's, he's, let's see, what argument can I just throw at the wall, uh, to make this go away? You know, my dad was a neo-Nazi. I'm like, okay. But there's a lot of fucking actors in Hollywood whose dads were neo-Nazis. Not a lot of people like Jews. I mean, you know, just... A lot of people out there... You know, if, if I've learned anything in the last... Uh, since 2015, there's a lot of racist people. In at least the United States. And a, lot of ra and a lot of Nazis, too. I mean, racism, I think, goes to the Jews, too. I feel... Uh, do Jews get... Yeah, Jews get racism. I think we that's a fucking... But, like... Okay, so and so Kevin's logic. Let's let's just let's just uh, break this down here. Uh, the reason why I sexually assaulted this fourteen-year-old boy at the time is because my father was a neo-Nazi and white supremacist. I'm like, okay, you know, I, I graduated college, but I'm not like the kind of guy who's gonna argue, uh, or who's in like speech and debate and shit like that. But I could probably tell you that uh, the correlation between uh, sexual assault and your father being a white supremacist and you know, a Nazi 
pretty slim to none. I'm pretty sure uh, those don't usually don't usually connect, my brother. What? Uh, I don't know if I should be calling you brother. Brother, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. So, so yeah. Um, was this a good argument? Um, uh, let, let's take let's let's think about this for one more second. Uh, was Kevin so? Was the reason why Kevin Spacey sexually assaulted a 14-year-old boy uh, because his dad was a white supremacist and neo-Nazi? Is that a good reason? Uh, and an excuse? No. I don't think that's an even... I, I think a child could probably figure out that's a bad argument. Kevin, stop stop trying to... You're done, buddy. You're done, brother. Go back on, buddy. You're done. Okay? Well, that's, that's fucking Kevin Spacey right there. Anyways, uh, here's a, uh, this a, it's a Diet Coke. <sighs> okay. This is from Comic Book Resource. A resource. First Super Mario poster has fans asking Nintendo to fix the plumber's flat butt. What? Uh, following the release of the first poster for the upcoming Super Mario Brothers animated film, fans are insisting that Mario's butt is too flat. The poster for the movie features Mario gazing out across the Mushroom Kingdom. However, fans were quick to point out something felt off with everyone's favorite plumber. Multiple fans took to Twitter to complain about the size of Mario's butt. Several edits, several edit, several edited the image have since been shared, showing the plumber with a much more substantial backside. <coughs> Claiming Mario would barely be able to jump three feet with those, his current design. So a redesign is necessary to ensure his actions in the movie are realistic. These complaints are reminiscent of the public outrage that ensued over Sonic's film design. In 2019, Sonic the Hedgehog was ready and sent to sprint into theaters after the release of the film's first trailer. However, fans all around the world expressed their thoughts on the blue blur's horrendous design, which gave Sonic much smaller eyes than fans were used to seeing. Fans insisted that Sonic's design was more creepy than it was cute, so director Jeff Fowler and his team redesigned the character with what appeared to be a much more satisfying design for audiences. Uh, what is not seen in the poster is the front side of Mario. However, a McDonald's employee recently posted an image of the character on Disney Discord and many believe it to be the movie version. The version, which will be voiced by Chris Pratt, seems to have features that are more in proportion with the rest of his body. Therefore, it could perhaps be a creative decision that Mario's butt is smaller in the film, consequently appearing more realistic. Joining Pratt in the film is a cast of all stars, including Anya Taylor Joy, Charlie Day, Jack Black, Seth Rogen, Kegel, Mike, and Key. While Pratt being cast to voice Mario was controversial, the Illumination CEO Chris. Mela Don Dondry assured fans the actor gives an exceptional performance. Chris was cast because he felt he could give a great performance as Mario. Mela Donry said, and now that we were done about 15 recording sessions and the movie is three quarters done, I sit here and say that I love his performance as Mario. So Mario Brothers is scheduled to leap into theaters April 7th, 2023. It is weird, though, how people aren't liking Mario. Like, it's me, Mario. That voice is going to get fucking annoying. Okay, watching it. But then I'm like, Chris Pratt is like, Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. I'm like, Brooklyn accent. I'm like, well, I mean, it's kind of Italian, you know? People really go, I, what? I guess people are just kind of sick of Chris Pratt. You know, it makes sense. And I'm assuming when this movie, like, started, and they cast Chris Pratt, he was probably in his height. And I think wasn't the whole divorce with his wife and shit, and he's a little too Christian now. Isn't that why people don't like him, you know? I assume that, I mean, I... I'm a hundred percent believing that's the reason why. But it's like no one ever cares like Charlie Day, and he's like he's gonna be. F <coughs> I'm I'm fully expecting uh, Charlie Day to be like wild card baby, wild card bitches, uh, and then jump out. You know I, I I don't see here. It's like milk steak. I like milk steak. Okay, uh, milk steak. Jack Black seemed fun. Uh, Keegan Michael Key as a uh, as Toad confirms that Toad is black. I uh, don't at me on that. For real though, we're, we're we are at a point in in society where it is important that we make cartoons hot. You know, not like don't make them in a way that we're like, I need to fuck that right. You know, I mean, wasn't the you know Sonic was a bad you know the last controversy? No, I think Lola Rabbit was before that, right? Uh, Lola Rabbit and the new Space Jam. They just they they took uh, they took our they took our Lola away. Uh, 
I have a lot of friends who are like, my sexual awakening as a child was Lola Bunny. Uh, and uh, mine was Kim Possible. So um, that's cool for those people. Uh, for all y'all, yeah, my, uh, my first boner was to a cartoon rabbit. I'm like, mine was to a cartoon redhead. So, um, you know, we live in a, we live in a society. Um, anyways though, but yeah, no, why would you, why would you take someone's ass away from them? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are. A good ass is a good ass. And we have to appreciate that. Uh, we want Mario, that thick, juicy, voluptuous ass. They, they take away our cures, and they sell us our poisons. Uh, that's what's going on. Um, and, that's, and that's what they're doing with Mario. You just make him flat side. You know, Doja Cat said, if you can see it from the front, wait till you see it from the back. And look what they did to Mario. Now, we're, now they're like, you can now see it from the back. And we did. And it's not good. And it's not... It's not... I don't think God wants... God did not make Mario that way. God made Mario thick AF, okay? And when Mario Odyssey came out, we got to see his nipples for the first time. Let's plump up his ass, Nintendo. Illumination. Let's plump up that... Let's, let's make my boy Mario thick. Two C's. Okay? Okay? You know what? I like that. Oh, from Only Sky. This, this is a fun one. Uh, pastor who gave kids I love hot youth pastors sticker placed on leaf. Uh, That's rough, buddy. Days after Fairview Baptist Church youth pastor Corey Wall handed out I love hot youth pastor stickers to kids, the Greer South Carolina Church says he's been on placed on administrative leave. However, their statement is hardly an apology and fails to acknowledge why so many people in the community are upset. As I recently posted after the sticker began making the rounds on social media, Wall himself admitted he handed them out in an email claiming he was just trying to poke fun at the what we he called the I love hot mom culture. He had it, added the joke was a mistake and in poor taste. The church's leadership only said in another private email it had discussed the matter with Wall and that he understands this should not have been shared with the students. Uh, the increased backlash, however, may have pressured them to issue another more public response. They did that the this afternoon. Okay, that's all I have here. So, you know, you know, you know, first of all, most of you are probably thinking, I'm gonna go on some anti-church rant right now. But honestly, I kind of see this as just a, a mistake. You know, like, you're just like, it's like, oh, okay, it's like you can't, I, love, I guess, like, I guess the problem is he works in a profession with underage humans, you know? Uh, that's, I think that's gonna be the, the, the worst part of it all, is that it's underage humans, so it's like, I love hot teachers, and you're like, yeah, I can see there's a problem there, and that's the problem, uh, but if it's, but I think this guy was thinking, like, I love hot youth pastors, I'm pretty sure he was thinking, um, <coughs> and I don't know the guy, so I could 100% be wrong, that, uh, he could be, like, he could have just thought, hey, youth pastor's my job, and I like to joke around that I'm sexy. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's probably what he was thinking of, but not thinking about, like, oh, I work with children. Uh, it was more just goofing around. It was like, it was like, I love hot accountants. Like, if you put that down, like, it's, it's not a big deal. And I think that's where we go here. I think it's just a common misunderstanding. Do I agree with it? No, I think it's really fucking creepy. Uh, when, you know, you, only, sometimes you just notice things are weird when, uh, yeah, when someone else points them out to you. And I feel like this may have been one of the situations. I'm not saying this is a good idea, but I don't think this guy should be losing his job uh, for this. I just think, like, hey, you know, I never meant to this to be, like, the kids think I'm hot. It was more... <laughs> yeah, I actually don't know how he would apologize for this. He'd just be like, I was dumb. Uh, I don't want to have sex with your kids. That'd be a good... I don't want to have sex with any of your children, uh, so let's leave it at that. And they're going to be like, oh, cool. I don't think he wants to fuck me. And, uh, he won't fuck you. And, uh, God's not dead. And, uh, but he left us in a hot car. I'll, I'll say that. God's not dead. Uh, but he did leave us in a hot car. So, uh, my, my suggestion for anyone else in the future, if you work with kids, don't tell them that you're hot. You know, just, you know, maybe, maybe just have a profet. Maybe, maybe just act like an adult, everyone. Maybe we should just all act like grown-ass people, you know? Maybe that's the problem. 
maybe we're not acting like adults, and uh, we should start acting that way and uh, being cool about that, okay? Um, Man proposes and God disposes. Thank you, Ed Asner. All right, our final uh, article we have of the day. Um, Quick Trip could soon operate urgent care centers in Kansas City from KSHB. Uh, Quick Trip, known across the Midwest for its convenience store locations, may soon add urgent care centers to its list of offerings. Roughly two years ago, the Tulsa-based company announced plans to enter the healthcare market with a newly created company called Medwise. Uh, in an October 2020 report from t- 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 Tulsa, that's all, okay. Tulsa Public Radio Station KWGS FM, the new entity has plans to open more than 10 locations in the Tulsa area as part of its initial launch. Two years later, the company expansion could include the Kansas City market. Quick Trip owned Medwise currently has 11 clinics in the Tulsa area and has interest in expanding our urgent cares in many adjacent regions to Tulsa, which include Wichita and Kansas City. Spokesperson Antonia. Far said in an email at KSHB41, Far said that although the company is exploring locations in Kansas City, a timetable on which any store might open remains unclear. If the Tulsa locations are represented of future locations, the urgent care facilities are standalone buildings. When the company announced plans to launch the urgent care locations in Tulsa, they plan to use Quick Trip's reputation as the foundation for Medwise. It's a brand that has worked really hard on developing a reputation for fast, friendly customer service in a clean and pleasant environment. Medwise Chief Medical Officer Patrick Aguilar told Tulsa Public Radio in October of 2020. No, okay. Let's 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 think about this here. First of all, um, you own the company Medwise, and you're starting like urgent care centers. So, uh, you know, living in America, uh, you know, if you've ever had to deal with uh, anything healthcare related, that's rough, buddy. Because uh, that sucks. So, this is clearly uh, a way for uh, for the Quick Trip Company to line their pockets and uh, charge fees after fees after fees for uh, health care and shit like that. So, well, first of all, I don't really support this. Um, you know, I just, I, I support doctors and shit like that, but, like, companies, because I feel like, I feel like the people who um, own gas stations or, or try to operate gas stations are probably not the best people uh, to be operating healthcare. I'm just saying, like, I think people will like this because, you know, it's Quick Trip owned, and, you know, you know, people like our gas stations, and they might like our fucking, uh, fucking medical centers, you know? Like, um, you know, this is a different thing. Like, why don't you just fucking open a clinic inside a fucking Quick Trip, you know? Just let me get a fucking hot dog, and then we can take my blood pressure and be like, man, maybe you should not eat any more of the hot dogs here. But you can't say that, because they're like, you can't be eating Quick Trip hot dogs. Um, uh, but we also need you to eat Quick Trip hot dogs. We need that $2 from you. You know, you know, that's, you know, that's the thing with this. Uh, and then if you don't know, if you don't know what Quick Trip is, it's kind of like, uh, if you're in the, the U.S., I don't know what the people, I don't know what y'all people, I know you guys call it, like, overseas call it, like, petrol and other shit like that. Uh, but Quick Trip is, like, in, like, the Midwest area, it's probably the better gas stations. I always think, I think Quick Trip and Casey's, I feel like those are the two best of the Midwest. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and I think, you know, there's Bucky's and there's Wawa. Um, Speedway's okay. I know people people like Wawa, they like Bucky's, and I don't know they like Quick Trip too. Uh, but Bucky's are like fucking Walmart's Walmart gas stations or whatever. Um, oh, like Love. I mean, Loves are just like truck stops. If you if you want to think about those like that. Um, but yeah, no, you know, like, do do is this really necessary? Quick Trip. This really can you just make hot dogs? Could you also have more hot dogs, more shit on the rollers in like the middle of the night? Uh, because I work nights, and when you're traveling, and you want to get a snack, a snacky snack, uh, you like to go to Quick Trip. But there's never enough things on the rollers. If they are, they've been on there all day, and uh, pretty dry and gross. So that's something I I like. Everything else actually is fine. That's <laughs> one more. Quick Trip CEOs. Stop with the fucking healthcare shit, and also put more, more hot dog. T- I love those like chicken, roll like those chicken things. You know, it's like a spicy chicken, some like chicken strip or whatever. But it's in like the hot dog shape. Fucking love that shit. You know, or like you put nacho cheese on anything. That's the fucking best, dude. Now we're talking fat guy stuff. Probably why Quick Trip's like we've seen how fucking fat you are, people. You need to fucking go 
to the doctor so they can give you weight loss sure, surgery. Because we see you walking into our stores and y'all are fat as fuck. Like getting your fucking... What, I mean, we sell you the fucking giant-ass Quick Trip cups, uh, and you fill it up with the most sugary drinks that have ever existed, and then you wonder why you got diabetes and other shit. It's like, probably because you come to our store, so it's like, you're coming to our store, uh, you're getting these problems, and then you can come back to us so we can fix your problems. We're, we're the problem and the solution, that's what Quick Trip is. Quick Trip is the problem and solution in these situations, and, uh... You know, if you didn't create the problem, you wouldn't have the solution. But I currently like your problem more than your solution. So, uh, things are very confusing, okay? Because of brownie! Apparently, it's confusing. Have you ever been out in public and thought, Hey, look at that fat guy. Only for it to turn out to be a mirror, and you are in fact the fat guy? That was the moment that kickstarted me into becoming the greatest health expert the world has ever seen. But I wasn't born being built different. Like Joe Cocker before me, I get by with a little help from my friends. And my friends happen to be today's sponsor, FNX Fitness. FNX Fitness is committed to creating innovative supplements of the highest quality that provide focus for a productive morning, energy to thrive all day, performance supplements for to reach new goals, unique sleep and recovery formulas to support any sport, and healthy supplements to support an active lifestyle for years to come. I also really enjoy their clothing line that makes you look good while you work out as well. Another thing I love about FNX Fitness is that with every purchase, they donate a gallon of water to a child in need. Start working out smarter, not harder, by using the link in our description today you can save 15% on your purchase. Go save 15% on some of the best supplements out there when using the link in our description. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. When you're at the beach, you aren't going there naked, letting everyone see your little shrunken pee pee from being in the water. No, you're wearing some sort of clothing to cover up your privates. So why would you let companies you buy products from have access to the privates of your credit cards? That's where today's sponsor privacy comes becomes the clothing for your credit card information. Privacy is the first payment product that keeps your personal information private while being even more convenient than using a physical payment card online. Privacy empowers you to protect your physical card information. Each merchant you share your card information with puts you more at risk to hackers or data breaches. Why not use a privacy card instead? By creating a virtual card with privacy for each merchant you shop with, your physical card is safe and secure. Privacy cards can be paused or closed at any time Time, preventing any future transactions from being authorized. Privacy cards can also be single use, meaning they close after just one authorized transaction. One of my favorite ways to use privacy is for a service with a free trial that requires you to put in a credit card to sign up. But wait, there's more. By using the link in our description, you can get $5 to spend anywhere. That's money you get to use. So start paying the smart way with privacy. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Because of brownie. So apparently, uh, Tom DeLong uh, rejoined Blink-182. So last week, because uh, I started heard the rumor, I saw someone, it was like a good rumor, a rumor stating that Tom was rejoining Blink-182 in the band. It was like a good rumor, it was good qualified. So, you know, I, I did make an effort to say uh, that, hey, uh, we're recording this on October 10th, uh, so things can change between that. So I, I record on Mondays and then the following Wednesday. So say you're listening to this on the Wednesday it comes out. I recorded this on the Monday prior. And I usually record it in the evenings because I just I prefer uh, to do that. I, I was drinking on the show, but now I'm, I'm taking a break. Uh, losing. I'm trying to lose weight, folks. Getting back into fitness. Fitness dick in your mouth. <laughs> oh. So yeah, it's like it's like two days. And so I record that Monday. And then the next day, Tuesday, not even really 12 hours later from when I initially uh, recorded that, they announced their new song, Edging, coming out the following Friday, and then they, you know, and then they announced Tom's back in the band, making, you know, it had to be in, like, the in-between of everything. It just had to be in-between all that. Why? Why? Why do bad things happen to me? Uh, but anyways, though, but I think I, I, I did make it clear. It's like, hey, I'm recording this October 10th. They announced it October 11th. So, you can't be too mad at me. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. Uh, I am going to try to make an effort. Like, the tickets look insane right now. Uh, I always do go to concerts somewhat last minute, but I think I'm going to see if I can, like, look for a good ticket deal on one of the shows. 
Um, I'm either going to go probably to the one of the Nashville dates, or to a Nashville date, uh, or make or make a trip up to Chicago to go see them. But I think Chicago, they just added a second date uh, from what I'm looking at. But, you know, anything's happening. It looks like it's like selling out, but also everyone's complaining about uh, the ticket prices because, like, the bad ones, like the bad seats, are like $300. And that's fucking... Uh, it's, it's pretty fucking wild. It's pretty fucking wild. Uh, oh, no! Pretty, pretty oh no our table of that uh of them it's not very work sucks i know uh work sucks i know tick uh pricing <laughs> so uh yeah no so i'm gonna try to make it um edging i like that i listened to the new song edging i really liked it i really did enjoy edging a lot i, I do enjoy some i do enjoy edging and remember one of the beginning of i'm like you're about to come the only podcast that's happy you came um you know just you know it's fun Fun, fun jokes. I like that. Uh, so, yeah, no, Edging is a good song. And I kind of like it because they're kind of going back to, like, being a pop punk band, like, more of a continuation. I feel like it's more of a continuation of neighborhoods, at least building off of that. And they're talking about how, like, they're making some of the best music of their life. Uh, I enjoyed Nine, and I really did like Matt Skiba in the band, but I've, I never really felt uh, that when he was in the band, it was Blink-182. It seemed like a side project like Box Car Racer or Plus 44. Uh, I, I never really saw it. didn't really feel like Blink-182. Uh, well, I, I enjoyed Nine, and I love that album. I love Matt Skiba. I love Matt Skiba to death. But Nine did not sound like a... If we're going to be like, is Nine a Blink... You listen to this. Does this sound like a Blink-182 album? I'm like, well, one of the singers kind of sounds like him, and the drums are kind of similar, but it's it's just a very pop album, and I feel like that album really tried to appe- appeal more to, like, kids. I bet someone at the record label was like that. Uh, but now I feel like with edging, and I feel like with more stuff that they're going to probably be working on, stuff like that, they're probably going to more uh, appeal to uh, their OG fan base and um, those fans, which I think is a good idea. I feel like if you have, um, you know, if, when you're an older band, like, you don't know how to appeal, you don't know what to appeal to, you know. Uh, try to appeal to the fans you've had forever, or try to appeal to newer kids, younger fans. It's different. So I think Edging is, I think Blink-182 is going to be a better band uh, if they appeal to, like, their their demographic, you know, their their older demographic. At least people my age and a little and older are going to be. And I think, you know, kids are getting, get, kids are getting really into pop punk these days. I feel like it, it's, uh, it's making a comeback. Just like your mom, it's getting a comeback. And so I think that's exciting for that too. And I think kids are liking that they, you know, MGK, that's, you know, Travis Barker was the drummer and a producer on that. And kids seem to like that. State Champs, they're doing really great. The story so far, I've been really liking them. Um, other, other, and like Demi Lovato released a rock album. You know, it, it, it's making a, it's, you know, it's like your mom getting a comeback. So really cool. Awesome. Hopefully I can continue to talk about Blink-182. Uh, I listen to them all the time, so, you know, um, because I feel like What's My Age Again is just, like, my life anthem right now. I'm not even 23, you know? It's, it's, it's as, it's as, it's as fun as, fun as that. What? Uh, She-Hulk ended, Uh, She-Hulk was a show on Disney+, and, uh, it was a very fun show. I liked it a lot. I really liked She-Hulk. I enjoyed a lot, a lot of, a lot of people don't, people did not like it. And uh, none of people didn't like the jokes in that. Um, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a believer that women can be funny. Uh, so I wasn't triggered uh, watching She Hulk and her twerking with Megan the Stallion. I'm like, you know, we could have done more of that. You could have had her not wear the fucking man ugly suit uh, when she was wearing that. She could have wore something else. You know, I'm just saying, women can be funny. Um, that, that's all we're saying. Women can be funny. Folks, um, it's okay to admit that. If I know some people are like, women aren't funny. I'm like, you know, some of them are. Th- there are some who aren't funny, but there's a lot of guys who aren't funny either. So uh, you can, you know, you, you pick them and choose them. But, yeah, women can be funny too. I'm, gonna, I'm also going to break your mind here. Non-binary people, they could probably also be funny, you know? Uh, humor, is not, uh, humor is not for one gender. It's, humor is all genders. Uh, and stuff like that, so that's, you know, I think that's a big thing I think you should think about, where uh, comedy, comedy comes from everyone, Uh, but uh, there are some women I've dated who are not funny, but I'm not saying it's because they're women, I'm saying it's because uh, they weren't funny, Uh, and I know a lot of people, I saw, was it, I saw the best, 
So I saw the best, uh, best fucking post. It says, maybe if you suck dick the same way you suck the fun out of shit, you'd still have a man. <laughs> Anyways, though, I don't know where I was going with that. I'm just like, chicks can be funny, and a lot of people think the show sucks because uh, they think women can't be funny, uh, and they can be. So shut the fuck up, okay? What? Uh, and, you know, another big complaint I think people had with She-Hulk that I think what needed to be intentional when they made this show um, is the fact that She-Hulk comics are comedies. So you have to think about it this way. Like, everyone's like, they ruined Daredevil in this show. They ruined Daredevil in She-Hulk. I'm like, okay, because it's not the same as the Netflix show. Disney's going to ruin it. So here's the thing with She-Hulk comics. If the character appears in a She-Hulk story or She-Hulk comic then it's going to be a comedy. So that character is going to be in comedy situations. That's the whole premise of She-Hulk. It's like putting, it's like if Walter White showed up in uh, The Office, and not like because Brian Cranston has working, but like Walter White showed up in Scranton, walked into Dunder Mifflin. Do you expect it to be a fucking serious show, or are you expecting it to be Michael Scott? And like, <laughs> what's up with you? got any meth hole, <laughs> just kidding, uh, you know, like, you expect Michael Scott to be making jokes, and so that's what happens, so, uh, you know, it, so when, like, more serious characters, I always think, like, Daredevil show up, uh, it's just gonna be a comedy, so, I, I'm assuming when Daredevil, Born Again, and even, I'll probably think the Echo series as well, when they get to that, um, Wilson Fisk will be back, he'll be killing people, slamming their fucking heads in car doors, I know, <laughs> I was like, why, why would you want to watch She-Hulk when you could watch that? I know. Why would you want to laugh when you could watch a guy get murdered with his head slammed in a door by a fat man who's pure muscle? That's, you know, that's, that's an interesting question for you. And you know what? It's okay. You know, God works in mysterious ways. Um, and, yeah. Oh, I thought the, like, they, they brought up Intelligentsia. Basically, they turn Intelligentsia into, like, some website like 4chan or 8chan, I think. 8chan's the, the incel. 4chan's the incel one, too. They're all incels, I'm like, to be honest. Reddit's pretty close to being incel. I just think women have found their place on it. You know, stuff like that. Um, I think a comment on a Reddit post when, like, I just said sluts are cool <laughs> or something like that. I'm like, that, you know, I say that on the show all the time. Sluts are cool. It's not slut shame anyone. And someone got mess like messaged me on Reddit. He's like, do you call men sluts, too? I'm like, buddy, I don't, I don't know who the fuck you are. But sluts are cool. Let's be honest with you. Sluts are cool. People were like, ugh. people were like, it's a bad thing being a slut. No, it's not. Sluts are cool. Um, yeah, no, then they had Intelligentsia, which is like, which made, yeah, they made it more like 8chan, you know, like just incels and shit like that, doing their incel shit. So people were calling it Inceligentsia, which I thought was perfect. Uh, I thought it was perfect. I like that. Uh, but no, it was like just a website, and I was expecting something a little more devious behind it, because Intelligentsia in the comics are like, all the super smart super villains. So I was expecting the leader to show up. He's a Hulk villain who, for some reason, is going to be showing up in the next Captain America movie as the main villain. Um, Samuel Stern, I think his name is. And so I was, I was really expecting him to be it. He was teased at the end of the original Hulk movie that no one needs to watch. Um, same with Abomination. He was in that. Like I was, I was like, oh yeah, you have to remember. Uh, a lot of this is going back to the old one. I love that, and like it was like the second or third episode. Uh, Jen was like calling Bruce, and like, "Hey, Bruce, uh, I want to. Uh, I think I'm gonna uh, represent a meal in court." And she's like, "Fine." Uh, you sent me a really nice letter. I was a different. It was like we we're different people back then. You know, like literally. Uh, that was fun. A little fourth wall breaks uh, throughout the whole thing. I think it made it really fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, about, yeah, no, I was expecting, you know, the leader to make an appearance, or, I don't know, I guess Modoc's gonna be in the next Ant-Man movie, so I guess we're not gonna see him, but I was, yeah, I was totally expecting the leader or something else to show up, uh, but yeah, it was like, every, every week, you know, it was like a, it, it worked as like a story of the week, but then there was also in the background some, like, other big story going on, like, the Wrecking Crew came in, uh, and tried to get her blood, but they couldn't get it, and then they had Josh, which, you know, we all know anyone named Josh is clearly a villain, like our friend Josh Casey, author of Track and Desire, A Journey After Swallowtail Kites. It's finally good that the real world and the fake world have finally combined in that a there's finally a villain named Josh. Because I bet you could go up to any woman right now and be like, I'm sorry what Josh did to you, and she'll probably start crying, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, 
or they'll probably they'll some they'll trigger it'll trigger something good bad it's gonna trigger something for you i'm telling you that's it and they're always named josh josh was the real villain of this whole thing um how do you how do you join how do you have sex and join an incel group or whatever that's always weird to me how that how that can work and i guess people just yeah and so they, there was like all these different story threads that's going on they didn't really seem to start making sense and then they finished the last episode, and uh, it <laughs> pretty fucking so like they. Jen was like so like at the end of it, it was like Titania barges in. Uh, Emil was back to in the abomination, but he was a good guy. And uh, was it Todd turned and tried to turn into a Hulk because he stole her. That he, he was behind intelligence the whole time. Then uh, Bruce came in because he thought Emil was attacking Jen, and then everyone she was like, "Stop! This is this making any? Is this what y'all want?" Is this making sense to anyone? And then stuff like that. And then it goes to, like, the Disney Plus, like, Marvel uh, section of it. Like, you click on Marvel, you go straight to that. You stopped. And literally, for a couple seconds, I'm like, did I press home on the remote? What the hell happened? You know, I'm like, what? And then she just pops out of there. Okay, where are we going? And then they go into the, Mar- the event- Marvel Assembled page, which is basically, like, the making of, uh, we call the Marvel Projects, which I fucking... I was like, okay, and uh, then, like, they go into, like, the writer's room, and they actually had Jessica Gow, the director, and another thing about the whole women can't be funny, uh, you know, yeah, incels, uh, you all love Mick, Rick and Morty, want to know who wrote that episode, Pickle Rick, Jessica Gow did, the director and writer person for this entire show, so I think y'all can shut the fuck up now about women being funny, because... You talk about, it was, he was a pickle, it was hilarious. Like, uh, I think we figured out, figured out what's going on with you. Um, so yeah, they, they like, go to, like, and then they're like, okay, this is what Kevin, and then they're, like, on the writer's room, like, this is what Kevin wants. And so Jen's like, okay, I'm gonna go, like, fight Kevin. So she's, like, going into uh, the office. She signs, like, a, uh, uh, not a non-compete, but, like, pay, like, contract or whatever, uh, to not, like, leak anything or whatever. And then, uh, and then she, like, fights these goons and then, um, go into Kevin's office. And it's not actual Kevin Feige. It was actually, uh, just, like, some robot algorithm named K-E-V-I-N, which was fucking funny. Had a little, like, hat, too. And I totally thought it was gonna be Kevin Feige, like, behind, like, a curtain, like the Wizard of Oz. Definitely wasn't. So that was fun, too. And they, like, mentioned the X-Men for the first time. Like, that was the first time X-Men was said in, uh, in a Marvel show, um, so that's pretty fucking cool, you know. They me- they mentioned the X Men, not yet, and uh, and they basically kind of confirmed. Oh yeah, and then they to end it all off, they basically confirmed that they're gonna probably make a Hulk movie or at least a Disney Plus series. Uh, and I'm assuming it's gonna be based off World War Hulk because they introduced us to his son Scar and his fucking haircut. Like just fucking, you see that fucking haircut? Jesus, dude. Uh, they should have made him, like, because I'm hoping what they do, I'm assuming what they do, and I'm hoping what they do, is they kind of make him basically, um, the combination between Hulkling and Scar from, and the Planet Hulk and, uh, World War Hulk storyline, and I'm hoping to do that, because that way, even more attempts to c- create the Young Avengers, which we were all waiting for, we all want the Young Avengers, um, but, yeah, before I end it, though, I want to tell you basically what movie they're kind of setting up. Uh, they're basically going to make an adaptation of World War Hulk. Now, the initial story, uh, World War Hulk, happens after uh, Planet Hulk. So, Planet Hulk was kind of recreated in Thor Ragnarok. So, have you seen that? You know, when, you know, on, so basically, the Illuminati. So, in this, and then in this world, uh, you know, if you saw the Illuminati in uh, Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange, um, you would know that there was an Illuminati there. So this is another Illuminati in the comics that created it, just, like, the people. And I think this one was Black Bolt, Tony Stark, Doctor Strange, and Reed Richards. There may have been other characters, too, maybe, like, uh, maybe, uh, like, uh, what was it? Like, you know, uh, Namor's usually on it, uh, T'Challa's usually on it, but I don't think the MC, this MCU has the, uh, has the... Has the Illuminati on it. So basically that, they, they think the Hulk is too dangerous, so they put him on a ship, they send him off-world. Basically, he lands on Sakaar, he joins the gladiatorial shit, and then he starts, like, a revolution. 
there and kind of takes over with some, and he has like some chick or whatever. Um, he gets pregnant. Yeah, he basically gets some chick pregnant. I can't remember who. Uh, so basically that happens, and then uh, she lays, has a cocoon, and then like an explosion happens on Sakar, thinking his wife is dead, died, and with her pre- his pregnant wife is dead. So he goes back to Earth and just beats the ever living shit out of everything. Well, here's what I. Yeah, so. Basically, yeah. Basically, it's like the Thor Ragnarok storyline where they start a revolution on Sakaar and stuff like that. And then here's what I read. This is from, like, Wikipedia, I'm pretty sure. After the Illuminati, Black Bolt, Tony Stark, Doctor Strange, and Reed Richards banished Hulk from Earth, the spacecraft they used, used explodes, killing Hulk's pregnant wife, blaming the Illuminati for her death and more powerful than ever because of this time spent absorbing the radiation levels on planet Sakaar, Hulk returns to Earth for revenge with his allies, the warbound Hyroing... Korg, Elo, Kaif, Meek, no name of the blood, Arch, Free, and Mung. So, like, basically, uh, it'd be, like, a continuation from his story from uh, what I would say is uh, the uh, Thor Ragnarok. And basically, because Thor Ragnarok, they basically got Planet Hulk in there uh, without, you know, because I think Universal had the rights to the Hulk. So that's She-Hulk. I enjoyed it. I hope you watch it, too. It was a lot of fun. It was a fun show. And it was cool, uh, you know? Cool stuff. Slick stuff. Neat stuff. Um, so, yeah. No, the other show I watched, uh, it was an easy week, because these are the shit I, I was going to watch regardless. The Rings of Power, basically a Lord of the Rings uh, TV show um, from like, Middle Earth, but it wasn't the... I thought they were... You know, when I heard Lord, uh, Amazon was going to make like a Lord of the Rings show, I thought they were going to remake, you know, the Lord of the Rings stuff, like... And then do episode by episode, you know, like maybe first season or whatever. You know, stuff like that. You know, going order like that with Tolkien. But then I guess they didn't. So they decided to create kind of a new thing, which is kind of cool because I feel, I think the, I think Lionsgate and like a million other, a million studios own The Hobbit, right? But like Lionsgate owns uh, the Lord of the, they had the Lord of the Rings movies and now Amazon's doing the shows and stuff like that. So this is a great way for them to like basically connect with the show, but at the same time, like, it doesn't necessarily need to be, like, visually the same or the same characters and stuff like that, you know, so it's kind of cool, um, you know, you know, I grew up, I grew up Christian, if everyone fucking take a drink again, uh, and, you know, the, the only times that you were allowed, uh, to watch anything like fantasy or science fiction, uh, it would either had to be Lord of the Rings or Chronicles of Narnia. Now, the Chronicles of Narnia, it was very very much just very Christian allegories. That's, like, the whole story is, like, Aslan died for Peter, and and then he then he rose again from the dead because it was a sacrifice, kind of like Jesus did. Lord of the Rings doesn't really have that. Uh, just J.R.R. Tolkien was just a Christian himself and, like, friends with... Tol- uh, with uh, he was friends with C.S. Lewis, and then, you know, they hung out together and talked and believed different things, so... Which, that's why I like Lord of the Rings a little bit more. They're like, oh, yeah, you don't have to be super fucking Christian uh, to enjoy this. You can you can be anyone, but I was Christian, so I think about that good and evil. Which, you know, there was one thing. They said it was, like, the very first episode. It was, like, over... Not over tubs, uh, voiceover from uh, Galadriel. It was nothing is evil in the beginning, which was kind of cool. Because it's like, are, are people born evil? Are we evil? Or are we corrupted and become evil? Very cool, very cool things. Um... Very, very cool thing. So, yeah, that's cool, regardless of your faith as well. Um, th- th- you know, when I watch these shows, and this is something you can you can kind of catch on, kind of can watch when you watch Lord of the Rings and stuff like that, but it's not 100% necessary, but this show is very much in this whole, like, the accessibility of, like, the, your Tolkien knowledge, because Tolkien made so much lore for the Lord of the Rings and stuff like that, and so they'll just randomly bring up uh, different people and shit, uh, like, in, in those, uh, like, Valinor, the Valar, are going to be in tune. And then, like, and you as a viewer, uh, and if you don't know anything about Lord of the Rings, you're watching, it's like, what the fuck are Valar? And it was like, the trees of Valar. I'm like, what the fuck do those have to do with anything? Um, and it was like, uh, the, you know, the first age, the second age, the third age. It's like, there's so much lore in Lord of the Rings, and, that, like, you have to, like, do research on what the fuck is going on. Luckily, I found, like, I watched a lot. I, just, I think with Lord of the Rings, the best one was, like, Screen Crush. Uh, if I watch any Marvel content, I usually watch, uh, use go through, like, new rock stars and stuff like that on YouTube. Go check them out. Like, they'll do a good job of explaining everything, going over each individual thing, trying to find all these Easter eggs, because that's, that's their YouTube page, baby. 
But you know, like, but Harry Potter, you know, I know a lot about the Harry Potter lore, but I always feel like when I go over new content or when I initially read the Harry Potter series, you, you, you kind of understood the lore pretty easily. Like, explaining the Deathly Hallows, I was in, like, a short story, and, like, you basically kind of had the whole Deathly Hallows figured out after that story, but even then, like, you don't, like, you watch Lord of the Rings, and, like, you see the one ring rolling, I was like, okay, it makes you invisible, but not always, and it attracts Sauron sometimes, but then there's that one time Bilbo used it and snuck in to talk to Smaug, but it didn't bother him then, but it bothered during Lord See, it's, like, confusing, and they don't, like, you have to, like, research, you have to, like, read a book to understand, like, one thing in this. Um, I know, like, I, 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 some more examples I think I have, are, like, um, the, oh, yeah, no, um, so, yeah, no, like, that's, like, Valinor, uh, that's, like, the Undying Lands, that stuff like that, uh, Ishtar, or Ishtari, those are the wizards, um, Val, yeah, Valar, like, elves, special elves, god elves, and stuff like that, so, yeah, it's just, uh, it's very, it's very fucking, it's very fucking crazy, you know, um, you have to, like, read, you have to, like, read another book to understand one book, and, uh, if he over, I think, I would say, I think Tolkien overcomplicated the lore, I love it, but he really overcomplicated it, for sure, um, then, like, to put into context, like, when does this show take place, if you haven't watched it, some people may not know that, so, um, what I know is, I think this world, the Middle Earth Ages, or whatever, split up into three ages, I think the fourth age, is after Lord of the after the Lord of the Rings ending, um, like the first age, I believe it was Morgoth, who was the big bad guy and his sidekick Sauron, uh, and that age ended in the death of Morgoth and then Sauron's disappearance. Someone commented on like, well, actually, it's actually about the first thing in there when that happened. Like, shut the fuck up. Um, second age, um, you know, second age was just that Sauron being a kooky fella. Um, Getting all them people to elves and dwarves and men all make rings, make some jewelry, and then he made jewelry to be that was better than all of it. And you know, it's like fuck, and it corrupted everyone. Um, and so that's basically the and this is where the show takes place, probably nearish the end of the second age. It's still dirt you, you meet in the show, like he's kind of a fuck up in the show, and he's gonna be a fuck up when he becomes an adult too. Uh, it ends when. Sildor kills Sauron, kind of, but, like, he cuts his hand off, and he has the ring, he has to throw it into Mount Doom, and he was a bitch, he didn't destroy it, which is, which is a problem for me, because you watch that, and Elrond, you know, Elrond, you should have fucking pushed him in, dude, you should have, you should have knocked Sildor in, he wasn't gonna fucking throw, you just let him walk right out, dude, like, you know how many more problems you caused than solutions that you did, Elrond, I actually like the actor who plays Elrond in the show way more than uh, uh, Red Skull did in uh, did in uh, the original. Just I don't know. I like his chin better. It's, it's that jawline, my, my friends. Um, but no, Elrond fucked up there. Uh, he he fucking played Middle Earth. Congratulations, you played yourself. He should have. He should have taken care of a Sildor. Should have. Should have maybe killed a Sildor, even if it didn't fall in. Uh, he could have uh, taken the ring with a, got a stick. Even, he could have probably just kicked the ring in, like, I know, uh, Gandalf didn't want to touch it. Elrond didn't have to touch either. He could have kicked it. Could have kicked it in to the lava. A lot of problems with himself. Or, Gandalf, I mean, actually, I don't even think Elrond needed to kill. Probably didn't even need to kill a Sildor. He probably could have, like, tied him up, you know, knocked him out. There's a lot of solutions to a Sildor... Uh, in Lord of the Rings, not destroying the One Ring, uh, and uh, being kind of a doofus, you know, even a goofball, you know, he was up there, they're getting ready to do it, and he's like, no, so, ah, eh, Sildor's been a fuck up for his, like, entire life, he, and Elrond just let him fucking walk out, Elrond just let him, I don't know who's worse, Elrond just let him fucking walk away with it, a goofball. All right, and that's basically into the third age, and then the, the the second age. The third age basically is when the Hobbit takes place and the Lord of the Ring takes place, ending when uh, Frodo uh, gets his finger bit off and uh, Gollum and the Ring 
fall into Mount Doom and to get destroyed, and uh, we all live happily ever after. So, so that's that's some cool shit right there. So that's basically the ages I explained to you, and Isildur being a fucking bitch. Um, but then, but then there's also been a side story of this stranger that fell out of the sky, and uh, the the stranger has magical powers. A long, long hair and a long beard, and you know, I thought I thought pretty much from like the second episode when because the second episode is when actually see, at the end of the first episode he just like falls, you know, and I'm like oh that kind of looks sounds like how like the Ishtari wizards kind of were sent to Middle Earth that makes a lot of sense I bet that's Gandalf because he's with the Harfoots which are basically hobbits they eventually become hobbits and uh, you know stuff like that. And then fucking Josh Casey over here, uh, I had to get uh, Josh Casey's like, well, actually, so, no, I'll, I'll read what he says. I'm, I'm going to put the screenshot up right now. Um, Based on what I know of the folks making the show, it won't be a wizard because they don't come until the third age. In this show, all about the second age. Probably not Sauron because it's just too obvious. And I said, well... Just remember when I'm right. And they didn't confirm it, but we all know I'm fucking right. And I also got another text, it, it said, from him. Also, the stranger is... Oh, sorry, I forgot to do the voice of Josh Casey, author of Track and Desire, A Journey After Swallowtail Kites. Also, the stranger is going to end up being Gandalf, and he's going to lead the Harfoots to the early Shire, and you're going to be right, and I'm going to be pissed. And uh, I think we were also talking about, like... Mario Kart and Super Smash Brothers at the time too, so um, that was that was another conversation. But I just wanted to show those receipts of uh, conversation because I was right. Uh, and Josh Casey, author of Track and Desire: A Journey After Swallowtail Kites, was wrong like he always is. He's always seems to be wrong. He's fucking he lies all the time. And he's always hating on something. And he hates popular things because he thinks it's cool. Did I mention he's actually one of my friends? You start talking shit on all your friends, and you're just like, no, I actually do like them a lot. I actually do have realized that I do, I do talk more shit about my friends in front of them than I do behind their back. I, don't, I rarely talk about people bad behind their back. It's always, like, right in front of them. And isn't that better than talking bad about them behind their backs? Everyone actually would like to know everyone. Is it better to talk shit to someone in front of them or behind their back? Because I do most of it in front of their faces because I'm... This is the type of guy you get. Which one is that? This is the type of guy you get. There we go. So, anyways, though. So, basically, yeah, they basically confirmed. That was Gandalf. Like, they, they should have just called him Gandalf or one of his old names, you know? Because uh, if it's not Gandalf, basically, there's one out of five people. It could be unless they create a whole new fucking wizard for some reason. Uh, which they kind of could. If it was one of the two blue wizards, that's two of the options. Which, and uh, he wears a lot of gray in it, so I'm thinking it's Gandalf you know, gray. And, like... I don't know, it just seems weird if it would be uh, Sauron or Radagast. Like, it just it just needs to be Gandalf, because Gandalf's, like, he's always had this relationship with the Hobbits, and so it has to be Gandalf. That There's no if ands, or buts. <laughs> buts. <laughs> About it, you know? Okay? So, yeah, that was The Rings of Power. I fucking loved it. I'm so ready for the second season. I didn't even go over uh, the tw one of the, the biggest twists of the entire series. I didn't even go over that. I want you to find that because I would feel like I know the episode's basically been out for a week. By the time, by the time even most people get to it, it'll be in over a week or close to a week. So like we've all had enough time to watch this shit. Um, so yeah, you know, I think I think it's a great show. If you if you like the original Lord of the Rings or the Hobbits even a little bit, I think you'll enjoy this show. You probably already have an Amazon Prime account that you're clearly connecting to your Twitch account to get a Twitch Prime. Uh, to help me out, twitch.tv slash the shweezy. Go check that out as well. So yeah, no, Rings of Power, so fucking awesome. I heard they're already, they started production on season two. I'm pretty sure it's filming when I talk about that. Uh, basically like October 5th, so like a week or so ago. They just started it on the next season, so I'm fucking excited. I'm excited to see where the show goes, but I mean, I kind of know where it goes. Uh, basically what's going to happen is um, Sauron is going to get the dwarves and then the race of men uh to create their rings and he creates his own rings he corrupts the men you know and then they fight and Isildur you know he was already introduced in the show uh has to kill Gandalf but not really finish him off completely and it's like you know 
What the fuck is going on with the Sildor, okay? This is, that's not the guy I am. This is the type of guy you get. Have you ever cracked open a cold one with the boys? The vibes are on, then all of a sudden, you are out of cold ones? Though the vibes are still on, the vibes will soon go off because you are out of cold ones. There's no need to drive when you're under the vibes. That's why today's sponsor, Drizzly, is here to make sure that the vibes continue. Drizzly gets all your favorite beer, seltzer, wine, whiskey, and much more delivered directly to your home. With their easy-to-use mobile app, we are getting one step closer to never leaving our homes. You know it's a saying something when it's being praised as the answer. Amazon for liquor. Drizzly is my go-to app for getting all the booze I need so I can do other things. So using our link in the description today, you can save $5 off your first purchase through Drizzly. Drizzly has proprietary ID verification technology that it provides to its retail partners that allows drivers to scan IDs for more than a barcode to make sure the purchaser is over 21 years old in the U.S. and of legal drinking age in Canada. Retailers on Drizzly may have a minimum order or delivery fee. So using our link in the description, get $5 off your first order with Drizzly. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. You're not a boomer who still goes to what our ancient civilizations called a store. You buy everything on the internet like a modern individual. What if I could tell you that you could be saving more on your purchases by only making a few clicks on your computer? That's where today's sponsor, Honey, will change your life. Honey is a free browser extension you can download using the link in our description of this episode. Honey searches the entire internet for promo code, coupon codes, free shipping, and anything else that will save you money when buying things online. It's 100% free and at no point will you have to pay for it with all of those many, many microtransactions. It's as simple as pressing a single button and you can start saving money. Not using Honey is basically throwing money away that could be saved for more important things. I recently had to get business cards uh, for myself and Honey literally saved me 60% on a, like a pack of 500 business cards. It was amazing. Add the Honey extension to your browser today for free by using the link in our description of this episode. And when you support, uh, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Cool stuff. Slick stuff. Neat stuff. Okay, so I guess it's time for Ask Shweezy, the part of the podcast, uh, where I go ahead and, uh, I tell you all about what's going on. What is it? Do I feel like I'm getting distorted? No, I'm not distorted. Okay, though, well, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's time for Ask Shweezy. I'm going to answer some questions. I'm going to answer questions and answers, you know. We live in a society. Uh, because of brownies! Uh, and so, therefore, uh, I, I, it's, it's my time. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. I just, like, I, I got distracted. Uh, Congratulations. You played yourself. Okay, let's go into our first question. Let's see what we got here. Are there any ways to deal with getting your partner too wet? Uh, with deal with getting your partner too wet. I'm, I'm making sure I'm reading this correctly. I love my girlfriend and we have a pretty good sex life on the whole, but I'm quite a giver in bed and I always make sure she's had at least one or two orgasms before we move on to PIV. Um, I'm assuming that's... Yeah, okay. Um... However, she gets so wet when she orgasms that I honestly barely feel anything, and I find it very difficult to finish as, as a result because the friction level is so low due to how slippery she is. I don't want to cause her discomfort by skipping the foreplay, but wondered if anyone else has experienced this and has any tips or tricks. Uh, and you also want to let me know, uh, we're bareback because we're trying for a baby, by the way, if that makes any difference to the response. Um, what? Uh, how un how unfortunate, King. Um, th this is how this is a problem for you. She's just fucking too wet, fellas. Uh, I can't deal with it. My my girlfriend, she's so wet. Uh, I I give her two orgasms, and I'm slipping it in there. I'm just like, I'm I'm just I'm, I'm we have hardwood floors. I'm slipping on that shit in my own home. That's what's going on. She she's just that turned on by me. Me and my hog. Me and my hog are just uh. Just turning, turning her on. Uh, I actually want to look up what PIV stands for, because for some way, uh, PIV meaning personal identity verification. Oh, what's the per PL penis and vagina? Okay. Oh, bro, wait. So, are you even? Ah, so you're eating her out. See, you're eating her out. Uh-huh. <laughs> Penis and vagina. Why did you... Why is that... 
why did you use PIV? That that sounds so much. That sounds so much different. You could have just said for penetration. Why did you just say penetration? That makes more sense to me. Uh, that's rough, buddy. Yeah, that's, that's also what I want to say to your problem. Um, she orgasms. She gets so ah. I mean, yeah. What what do you what do you do? Well, yeah, I actually don't know what to. I mean, I've never been with a woman and she's just like, it's been wet. But I've never been like, this fucking thing is dripping. Um, well, besides your mom. Um, but that's another thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I guess that's, I guess some, yeah, some women have this problem. Uh, so, she, you, I don't even want to answer this question, to be honest with you. I'm, I just want to say fuck this guy. Uh, is he just, it's just, just like a humble brag. Why am I talking about this on the show? Uh, so you're worried, she's too, she's too, what happens? Um, I guess, do you come, I guess, because you, it sounds like you're eating her out. Uh, so that sounds like the thing. Um, I mean, have you figured out how to, how to do it with your penis? You could try that. You mean you could try jerking off your own before so you last longer? Thinking about, you could think about... Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, she always ruins my boners. That's for sure. Marjorie Taylor Greene really does ruin my boners for me. Uh, you have, I mean, there's there's other, I mean, I guess, the, I mean, the only situation I can say, you gotta turn her, you can't, but then it's like, that's not as fun. Uh, buddy, I think you should just fucking live with this. You're like, oh, I can't feel my dick inside her, oh no. I think you should just shut the fuck up. Um, there, that's the answer, I'm, that's the answer I was thinking towards. Maybe you should just shut the fuck up. I think that's going to be the answer I want to give you, uh, because when when if a guy says to me, yeah, my girlfriend's just too wet, and you're like, fuck you. It's the, it's the same situation where people are like, I can just I just eat so much and I just can't get fat. Fuck you. I think these are the, these are the same fucking people. They're, they're the same people. They just they just have this is the sex version of I eat as much food as I want and I don't get fat. I think I think those people maybe some people just need to go fuck themselves. I don't want to tell you. Go fuck yourselves and uh, fucking deal with it, pussy. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't have anything else to say to that. I don't even. I didn't even have a real answer. I'm just saying, suck it up. Um, I think the girl I'm dating is intellectually disabled, but I can't tell. What? Uh, basically, some of the things she says or the way she acts makes me think that at times she is intellectually challenged slash disabled, but I don't know if she was ever diagnosed as such. How can I find out in a way without hurting her feelings? What? Okay, so I remember, I don't know, there's some comedian out there. He, he talks about how his like wife uh, was diagnosed with Asperger's later in life, as an adult, but like he was already dating her and like he was already ride or die with her. Congratulations, you played that, yourself. That's not ride or die. Is the, First of all, ride right. or die, bitch. So, like, he was already way too far into it with her to do anything. So now he's just, now the love of his life has Asperger's. And you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I've worked in customer service jobs. I've, I've talked to those old people. There are a lot of fucking baby boomers out there with undiagnosed autism running around with society. I remember there was a kid I went to high school with. I won't name his name because that just, that's, that's our whole fucking can of shit that I don't want to get into. Uh, he had severe autism. Do you, did he have a touch of the tism? No. God slapped him into last week with his autism. That's how much autism this kid had. And there's nothing wrong with having autism. I don't, I, I want to say that. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, however, like, his mom refused to, to think he did because it was the 90s slash 2000s. And she was, she was just like, I don't want my baby to be weird, so if I don't get him diagnosed, he can't have autism. Like, it doesn't work that way. Okay, I, I just want to say it doesn't work that way. Uh, and so since, you know, when, when kids have autism, one thing they help you is how to, you know, how to, you know, you're not, like, perfect, but, like, how to function in the world. Like, we all, we are, you know, we all have to learn how to function in the world, doesn't matter if you have autism or not, like, we all have to learn how to function properly in the world. It's called a society. We live in a society, as my favorite George Costanza would say, not the Joker. It was George Costanza. 
I would say we live in a society, and so we all have to learn to live that way. Um, intellectually challenged or disabled, though. See, here's the thing. I'm not getting any examples of what she's doing. Um, you saying some of the things she says or the way she acts makes me think that at times she is intellectually challenged slash disabled. Um, isn't disabled, like, autism isn't a disability. Actually, let's look that up. Okay. Is aut what is, what is, is autism considered a disability? Autism is a neurological development disability. Okay, with an estimated prevalence of one of the 2% of the Americans world population, the diversity means that each person's individual experience with of autism and needs to support the services can vary widely. Okay, so, um, in other words, That's rough, buddy. it is, it is disabled. I feel like disabled is more of a physical thing and uh, mentally challenged is the other, uh, the other side. But, like, I don't think Down syndrome people are disabled, but apparently some people are like, they're disabled. I don't know. Maybe don't, maybe don't get medical advice from me or psychiatric care from me or any of this from me. If you're, if you're looking for that advice, maybe just don't go to me. I don't think I'm the one to answer it. Um, however, how do you figure it out? Um, well, you could, let's, let's think, well, I'm not going to give you good advice, so I'm just going to give you advice. So you, you could, like, find the do I have autism test online. And you could, like, sit on the couch with your girlfriend and, you know, be like, huh, I want to, I want you to take this quiz, but I'm not going to tell you what it is until we finish. And so you do that do I have autism quiz that I have started a couple times, never finished it because I like living in the dark on whether or not I have autism or not. Okay, that's just, that's just me. Um, this is the type of guy you get. So, uh. We're going to leave it at that. So maybe you could do that. Just see. Um, maybe find some quizzes like or like signs you have autism and or signs you have some, so-and-so. Or, you know, maybe try to look up, maybe learn about some mental disabilities and look it up through the Internet. And you could diagnose her with that. However, how, how functioning is it? Because it, it all depends on how fu functioning you are in the world because if you can't, if you can't function gonna be you're gonna have a hard time and it's gonna be rough that's rough buddy so there there's uh there's two wolves inside all of us i will say and uh i don't know and if it's a problem just break up with her dude it's, it's not the fucking end of the world dude for real like just figure that shit out how do i introduce my girlfriend to my mom without her thinking i made a bad choice so I have a girlfriend. Uh, looks like you're both teenagers, but she lives a few hundred kilometers away. Okay, could you use real metrics? Uh, away. So we only meet a few times a year. Usually I'm the one visiting her, and it's all fine, but she's coming up in May next month. Uh, she's just, it's just like coming up in next month. And I'm almost positive my family will be at home. The thing is that my mom is really intelligent and smart and tried to raise me the same way. I'd say she did a good job, and my girlfriend is not. She's not dumb, but she's not really interested in such things. And for me, it's fine. We just talk about other stuff, and I'm a bit afraid that my mom will criticize her. I know she won't tell me to break up or do anything because she respects my choices and understands that I'm a separate being with my own goals in life, but any idea ideas what I should do. Also, she probably knows we had sex, but she picked up the clothes the last time my girlfriend was here. So, uh, first of all, yeah, she's probably not here for sex. Just, just have safe sex. Just wear a condom. Even if she's on birth, just wear a condom. Fe fellas, if you're, if you really don't want a baby, and she says, oh, I'm on birth control, just wear the condom anyway. So, you'll say, okay, but wear the condom anyway, you know? Unless it's like a desperate situation. You know, we all know that, but, but for the most part, just keep a condom in your pocket. And the people criticize you for carrying around a condom in your pocket. Uh, just talk about how they have kids. So that, that's a good, uh, that's a good life advice. Congratulations, you played yourself. So yeah. So uh, you're worried about your mom's impression of your girlfriend. I guess they haven't met before. How did? Was it? The only a few times a year. I'm like, I guess you haven't met. Yeah, that's that's cool. I mean, how long? I would. How convenient it would be just to never have to introduce significant others to your parents. I mean, I only have one remaining. God, that would be so fucking easy. You know, like, how things are going great, and then all of a sudden, would you like to meet Nancy? Is that Would you like to meet Nancy? Is that how, is that how you want to end this? 
Um, because that's not like I told you. Like the the guitar player in this band I'm playing with, uh, his new his new girlfriend and the mom were just sitting down talking, have a ca- good conversation, and that I was the only one who was anxious about it. And that's the problem. That's that's the problem with my life. So, what I would say, you know, what do I say is, um, you know, th- there's there's a barrier. You know, not everyone's girlfriends are gonna get along with your mom, and you know what. That's okay. But remember, who's touching your wiener? And if the answer's your mom, you're... Okay, you're still allowed to listen to this podcast, but I don't... You should know that's the wrong answer. I think um, that that would be the wrong answer. You answered wrong. You're incorrect. Um, that was the dumbest thing I ever heard. Go home. So who's touching your wiener? The answer should be your girlfriend or wife or partner. So it's always good to take her side on, on things and... Uh, you know what, um, just to be honest with you, um, if your girlfriend's a good person, uh, and your mom's not a good person, uh, your girlfriend will be a good person, and your mom's gonna be a bad person, that's the thing, and so, and also, yeah, and you know, there's a lot of things, you know, sometimes you have a crazy mom, and that's why it's always a good idea to just, uh, enjoy upsetting your mom, like I do, and, uh, that way, um, you you have fun when she gets upset, and it's, it's a lot of fun. So maybe that's it. So uh, how to introduce your girlfriend to your mom? It's like, hey mom, this is my girlfriend. That's all. That's to answer the question easily. That's how you do it. Uh, hey mom, this is my girlfriend. You're like, oh, it's finally nice to meet you, and stuff like that. Um, here's something you should also think about. Uh, don't leave them like you know in the room alone because it's gonna be a little awkward for both of them. So just kind of like if you have to leave the room, be very quick. And shit like that, you know? It's just how it is. And, uh, hopefully she's fine with the sex parts. Just work on them, bro. Uh, And you'll be good. Okay? Okay? I like that. Are lower back tattoos trashy? I really want to get one, but a lot of people say it's trashy. Um, the answer is yes, it's trashy. Uh, the people who get those are trashy people. Um, and even if at one point it wasn't trashy, um... Trashy is as trashy does. The reason there's a tramp, it's called the tramp stamp, because tramps have them. Tramps can be hoes, you know, that's before we called them thoughts. Uh, they're just called tramps, Lady and the Tramp. And uh, you know who Lady is, and I think you know who the tramp is, you know? Uh, yeah, and I think, you know, the reason why is you bend over, and it's like when you're when you're doing someone from the back, you know? You, you get to see the tramp stamp. That way you know it's a self-identifying marker. I never knew that people chose to get those. I just thought you were born with them. It's like, who who purposely is like, you know, you know what I want on the back side of my butt, right above my ass? I want a fucking butterfly. Uh, well, when people know I'm into butterflies. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't get what, what's going on with y'all that you think you need a fucking butterfly on the lower back. And they wear the shirt up and like, look at the sta- my tramp stamp. Uh, it says lucky on the back. Because you're going to get lucky tonight. Okay. Um, so that's cool. Um, yeah, lower back tattoos are trashy. What? I mean, unless... Unless you're like Travis Barker and you just have tattoos all over your body. Uh, and even then, like his face tattoos. I don't like his face tattoos. Head tattoos when you're bald. It's kind of weird, too. You look like the Executioner from Marvel, the Marvel comics. Uh, just like, my fucking head tattoos. I think those are weird. I think face, I mean, the area itself isn't bad. It's just only in that, you know, it, it's just a sign. You know, like, if you're a lot lizard, and you're like, the only thing I need to survive on is cum, trucker cum. And it's just how it is. I didn't make those rules. I think God just decided, I'm like, if you want to be a hoe, you gotta get, you got to get a fucking butterfly in your lower back. That's that's what it is. I really want to get. You really want to get one. Are you are you really trash? Well, and you know, let's just also remember: just because you're trash, doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called garbage can, not garbage cannot. What? Well, I saw another quote about trash today. Let me let me find it uh, because it, it really did speak to me. I think I posted it on Instagram, so um, you can find it over there. So uh, don't don't be cool. I may be trash, but that means I'm someone's treasure. Actually, I like that one a lot more. Just because I'm trash does not mean I can't be someone else's treasure. That's 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 nice. You know what? 
I like that. You got the Garth Brooks approval, which is not good approval. It's just a approval. Sometimes not all approval is good, you know? That's a fact, you know? Not all approval is good. Um, not all... Uh, why am I not blanking on every song I want to sing when I, when I do one of these? Okay, well... Uh, okay, let's move on. Okay, here we go. Uh, what are your thoughts on a 25-year-old female dating a 44-year-old male co-worker? Okay, so what I would say, you know... Uh, there, there's two different two different points you have here. Dating someone who is close to two decades older than you, so that's that's one. Um, and then you have uh, coworkers. Those are so those are two different problems and could be red flags. Now, so you said your age is twenty five. Her age is twenty five. He's forty four. Like a nineteen year age difference, nineteen twenty. So let's assume they met. At this, if they met at this age, I feel like it's fine. Cause I, I have really figured it. I figured this out. Twenty-five. The older you get, twenty-five should be your youngest. You know, after you hit, I think you know, around the time you get thirty. Twenty-five is the youngest age you should ever be dating, and that's like you met them around twenty-five. You know, like I met them at twenty-three. And okay, like let's. I'm not getting into the super that many specifics, but I feel like. The older you get, the youngest should always be 25. Because they're old enough to rent a car, you know. Uh, they're old enough to do a lot of shit, you know. Like, it's over 21, where they can legally drink and go into bars with them. It's not creepy. They're years out of high school, so that's nice. So I feel like 25 is the youngest. So, like, I feel like 44 and 25 is an okay age. Assuming those are the ages they met or, or like, a year apart, you know. I feel like that's okay. Um, even that, like, you know, you say 25 and 38, like, that's a pretty big age difference, but that's still, it's still, still, I don't think it's, I don't think it's weird, it's just an age difference that's weird, it's not, like, creepy difference, there's a creepy age difference, and then there's just an age difference, you know, like, let's say, like, the woman's 35 and he's 54, like, do you feel, is it because it's the the younger number that's weird, or... Because it's still like a 20 years age gap, you know? But I feel like 25, I feel like... We all, I mean, we all kind of should know better, you know? So I feel like that... I feel like the age difference is okay in this situation. Mainly because I feel like 25 is the perfect bottom goal. Like, after your 30s, it's just the perfect bottom goal. Like, no matter how how old I get, 25, I can still date 25-year-olds. And uh, Unless you're Leonardo DiCaprio. He's... Um, I want to get I want to get Leonardo DiCaprio's sloppy seconds. I think that's the I think that's the life I want to live. Just living off of Leonardo DiCaprio's sloppy seconds. I mean, if I lose a couple more pounds, we're, we're the only difference is our is our uh, success. I mean, our our bank accounts. So we can live off that. So that's 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 cool. You know. Because the brownie. Um. Yeah, um. So yeah. Now, now the second one is coworkers. So. Dating your coworker necessarily a bad thing. Oh, well, it does depend on the job. Uh, you know, that that is, like, if you're a boss of someone, it can be a little weird. Um, so there's that situation. But if you're on the same level, it's not too bad uh, to say. It's just It just gets complicated. It's not bad when you're during the dating part. It's bad when you get to the breakup part. Because once you break up, mm, it's going to be a little rough. Uh, because uh, then you're, you're you know, because, like, when you break up with someone, like, the best idea is to... Not see him ever again, you know? You don't have to hate, you know? Sometimes you break up, you don't hate someone. But it's a good idea, like, when you have feelings for, um, with someone, to just not be seeing them every day. And when you're working together and you're seeing them every day, it can be pretty bad. That's why the band I play with, if you remember, we told uh, a story about the guy named Trash. Uh, we told him that uh, we're all gay in this band, but we made a pact not to date each other because it would ruin the band. And I, I, I honestly, I think in any other band, like, I feel like, yeah, you, you shouldn't date any members regardless. I, I just don't think you... In bands, and so... If I would say that that response to coworkers, Yeah, so I'd definitely say coworkers. I don't say it's a bad thing. It's not a bad if you're on, like, the... If you're kind of working the same job, you know? But when you break up, that's where it can be rough. And you know one thing's about the breakups. Unless you're fucking me. Or me. not you know, Unless you're fucking me, then you don't think about that. Uh, unless you're me, then you think about that. So... Uh, here's something to think about, so just remember that, and we can move on, okay? 
Ted Bundy attraction? Okay. Um, so, uh, what? So yeah, Ted Bundy was fairly, he was just a fairly attractive guy. And so, and I think that's probably helped him with his success rate. Um, is, is killing women and raping them success? I mean, I don't like to consider that success, but like, that is weird. Like, well, how do we define success? Or like, you get what you want in life? Is that success? You know? I mean, that's what Ted Bundy wanted. He got, he did, a, he was successful at least like 30 times. Uh, but Ted Bundy, he was so fucking sloppy. Um, I think though, like, so he did like in the Northwest. So he like did, I think like Seattle and Utah, he did a lot around there. I think maybe Oregon, maybe Oregon. I'm not too sure, but he got a lot in there. And then he escaped prison twice. The second time he made it to Florida. And, you know, if he would have just like, stopped in Florida, just stopped killing women in Florida, he would have been, he probably, you'd probably be out of jail for a long time. Like, he just, but maybe get, like, a fake ID or whatever and eventually get everything set up where he has, like, a, like, a normal, you know, a normal life. He could have got away with it, you know? He'd be like, is this guy Ted Bundy? We'll never know. But then, no, he just had to keep killing and raping women. He went to a sorority house and did it. Like, Jesus, dude. Like, that's so weird. It's so weird to kill him. Like, I don't feel like Jeffrey Dahmer liked killing people. I feel like he just wanted, like, a zombie, you know? And, yeah. Anyways, well, both both guys are bad. Um, but, uh, why people are attracted to Ted Bundy. Um, I mean, he's an attractive guy. I mean, uh, Elizabeth Holmes, I think she's attractive. She's a very horrible person. Uh, she is a very... <laughs> Jody Arias, she's very attractive. Uh, but she killed her boyfriend. And that's not, like, a good sign with your mental health that you're, like... It's like that. You know, I finally watched Fight Club for the first time uh, last night because I was like, you know, I've never seen Fight Club. Unfortunately, I already knew, like, the twist that uh, Tyler Durden is uh, the the narrator, Jack, or whatever. I think his name should be Jack. So, uh, you know, so that's a thing. Um, Yeah, that, it's like, yeah. And I was like, I kind of, I can, I see where the, I see... I relate to this guy. I'm like, that's not a good sign. You shouldn't be thinking of yourself like that. Um, but yeah, no, I think just Ted Bunny's an attractive guy. And I know for women, it's so different because men just want someone who looks hot. Women do want someone who's like successful, famous, kind of like that. And so that is like an attractive trait. So that step two probably helps your attraction with Ted Bunny. I think, I think the true thing is you're attract. You could be attracted to someone. I don't feel like anyone's attracted to Casey. Someone was attracted to, uh, to <laughs> Dahmer. I feel like Dahmer just had to stop being fucking weird. Um, Dahmer could have easily had a, a relationship if he wanted to. Um, but anyways, though, um, yeah, you can just think someone's attractive but th- still think they're a shitty person. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's how that's how life works. You just some you just some people get you hard and wet. And some people don't. Some people get you hard and wet, and uh, you definitely don't want to meet them in real life. That's also a very important factor into all this. Just don't meet them in real life, and life will be good to you. Life's what you make it, so uh, let's make it rock. You know? Okay. Okay. Um, last question. Here we go. Why do people think playing video games is a childish thing when playing sports and board and card games like Solitaire and Chess are literally kids' games too? I'm not talking about why are video games looked down on when people play sports and board uh, and board and card games. I am talking about why are video games seen as childish things, but not sports and board and card games. So I do I do want to mention though, if you want to look at like the history of video games, so. When, you know, when, like, you know, Nintendo and Sega, you know, NES, uh, Sega uh, Dreamcast, is it, it wasn't the Dreamcast, Sega Genesis, you know, that their uh, SNES, they, when, when they get down to marketing, what they have to do uh, is that, yeah, they could put this in electronics, like, and stuff like that, they could advertise it as electronics, but they always thought, huh, if we advertise these as toys, more kids are going to want to buy them, and a lot of times... Uh, since kids are kind of new to the world and are learning everything, learning video games is pretty easy for them to get into. So they did that. And then it also, they also decided with toys, toys are, you know, differentiated between men and women. So, or boys and girls. 
And so they decided to advertise to boys because they think that was a bigger audience. And so that's why video games have always been kind of like a man's thing or a boy's thing. And they were looked down as this toy. So I think that's one uh, big thing that is the reason why um, is video games are, are kind of looked down as childish. And also, since you didn't ask, is for uh, was more tailored towards uh, men than women. So a little fun fact. I think initially starting out as toys, and I think really, if you look back at like the original, some of the original SNES games or NES games, you look at like Super Mario. Like, it's a very simple con- concept. Like, you literally jump and run and stuff like that. That's that's basically the, con- the whole concept of the game. You just jump, jump over things and stuff like that. And that's, like, kind of advertised for kids. You know, kids to play. Uh, kids to use the TV to play that. And, like, that's kind of what it was for. Um, and then now, like, we got into, like, the age of 3D. We're making games complicated and hard and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I feel like in the initial run of video games, a lot of them were made for kids or adult, like, n- not necessarily advertise towards adults but maybe a little bit more towards kids so uh it's an interesting fact um with that i feel yeah but then we look at like cars playing sports um i mean there's professional sports that adults do uh, and that's been around a lot longer probably than like esports have been around for the most part like because a lot of times it's one-on-one games and though you go back to arcades and that was like it and then and they may have had tournaments uh, that i don't know of and even then i don't really keep up with a lot of esports to begin with um so y- you pick your poison you know um card games i feel like <laughs> i think card games were made for like you know they, they kind of really started when like boomers and older were like kids and that's what they played and now they're playing as adults because now you notice like a lot more adults are playing because our generation when we were kids we were playing video games a lot now we're adults and we still want to play video games but we like it so, yeah, it's kind of like that. It's just people do it as kids, then they want to do it as adults, and then they make it happen as adults. So uh, it's very interesting. It's, this could be a very good study. There's a lot of a lot of other opinions people could say, but um, are video games, all video games childish? No, definitely. Uh, I played One time I played Cyberpunk uh, 2077, uh, streaming it on Twitch, and we picked up an overdosed... Naked woman, and I'm surprised my Twitch account is still up. Twitch.tv slash the Shweezy, and that. So, you can also watch me play video games every Thursday. Twitch.tv slash the Shweezy. So, yeah. Anyways, though, that's how we're ending today's episode of Cancel Shweezy. It's been a great episode, folks. We're literally a couple weeks away from getting to 100, so definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, over on YouTube and wherever else you are listening to this podcast at. Uh, podcast being Cancel Shweezy, the Lord's trademark favorite podcast. Thank you so much. Make sure you go check me out on social media at the Shweezy, my music under Shweezy, twitch.tv slash the Shweezy. Uh, make sure you connect your Amazon Prime account to get a subscribe. Help out your daddy over here. Daddy. Um, and then you got our Patreon page. A great way to say thank you for being a friend. And don't forget, if you are on the audio platforms, make sure you go check us out over on our YouTube page where we post our highlights and more of the show. So you definitely want to check that out. And don't be stingy over there. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. Um, and then, obviously, and leave us a comment, like, you know, and share that with all your friends because it's a great way to help the show out for free. And if you're on the audio-only platform, give us a 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1-star rating. So uh, let's end this. Like always, honk if you love butt drugs. Stay awesome. Believe it or not, Schweg is in at home. Please leave a message at the beep. I must be out, or I'd pick up the phone Where could I be? Believe it or not, I'm not home You just finished a full episode of Cancel Shweezy. You are now one of the smartest individuals who will ever exist in our world. Uh, If you like that episode, make sure you subscribe, whether you're watching this show or listening to the show, make sure you subscribe. That way you get notified whenever we release full new episodes as well. And if you're on YouTube, smash that bell button. That way you get notified anytime we make a post over here on YouTube. Uh, Honk if you love butt drugs, and uh, yeah, stay awesome.